one of our comments that we received from a woman after our last segment, she said that after hearing you speak, this is the first time she got a sex toy and she actually used it <laughs> and didn't feel guilty about it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on Second Act TV. I'm so happy to welcome back Joan Price, the author of numerous books, including Naked at RH, Talking Out Loud About Senior Sex, and the topic for today's program, Better Than I Ever Expected, Straight Talk About Sex After 60. Joan, thank you so much for being here again. Oh, my pleasure. I love, I love being on your show, and I love the comments from the listeners. My goodness. Well, I'm, I'm sure we're going to get a lot today, as the audience absolutely loved you. The segment went through the roof. And I just want to thank you again today for your time. I know you're really busy. You get interviews requests all the time. And we're so lucky to have you here. Well, I'm lucky. <laughs> I'm well, a lucky one. In, in, but, you know, in that regard, kind of have a bit, a bit of a personal question. You didn't get to this point of being the senior sex expert <laughs> that the media goes to, you know, without without challenges. You know, that, that wasn't easy. You face pushback, some ridicule, <sighs> snarky remarks. I mean, what, what was that like? How did that affect you? I kind of expected it that I would be facing what I call the ick factor, mm -hmm. which is society thinking, ew, older people having sex, wrinkly people, ew, who'd want them? Ew, la, 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 don't talk about it. And I say, yeah, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it and write about it and bring it out in the open. And my first book, Better Than I Ever Expected, Straight Talk About, it, about Sex After 60, got a lot of backlash like that. Yeah. The first review, I don't know if we talked about this before, the first review of this book mm -hmm. was in the San Francisco Chronicle magazine, and it started with this line, now that boomers have discovered their sex after 60, could they please stop writing about it? Well, and that's that's the kind of ignorance that we're facing out there. Yeah. And so again, kudos for you for for doing this you know and, and helping us be able to talk about it and actually enjoy sex way way into the aging process so anyway uh, the topic today is redefining redefining sex as we age you know you admittedly say there's a lot of challenges some things don't work anymore so my first question to you is you know what are those key challenges and then what do you mean by redefining sex well, the key challenges are, as, as you put it, and as I'm always saying, the old ways don't necessarily work the way they used to, which means that people with uh, vulvas don't lubricate naturally enough for penetrative sex or sometimes at all. Mm -hmm. There may be vaginal discomfort. It may be that although intercourse is possible, it isn't the pleasure, most pleasurable mm -hmm. way to have sex. Yeah. And for aging penises, they may not get erect or stay erect as long as, as they want to for penetrative sex. But notice mm -hmm. all of this, I'm saying for penetrative sex, there's so many other ways mm -hmm. to give and receive sexual pleasure mm -hmm. that you can continue to keep having wonderful sex. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be redefined and not as a, oh no, we can't have real sex. We'll just, mm -hmm. it is real sex. No. And there's two issues here and two different, two sets of people perhaps that we're talking to, or maybe a combination thereof. And that is couples, you know, who've been together mm -hmm. for a long time. And then the sexual desire has gone for whatever reasons. Then there's also maybe even a larger chunk, which yeah. are people who are starting over again. And what I really want to touch on is not the logical part necessarily of, well, yeah, you should talk about it and do that. And it's tough to do that. It's really, yes. really hard to do that. We've mm -hmm. learned new skills. We learn new skills all the time. So we can learn the skills of talking about sex, mm -hmm. even if this is the first time we've ever had to do that. Mm -hmm. We can't depend on a partner mind reading. And even if we don't have a partner, 
we need to be able to explore things. And that may mean going into a sex toy shop and saying, Mm -hmm. here are my issues. Can you help me pick something out? It's, It's interesting you brought that up for two reasons. One, one of our comments that we received from a woman after our last segment, she said that after hearing you speak and giving your advice, that this is the first time she got a sex toy and she actually used it (laughs) and didn't feel guilty about it. Oh gosh. (laughs) Yeah. And then a man said that he was so relieved, actually several men said that they were so relieved to hear you talk about, you know, that, that, penis vagina sex isn't the most important thing that's like oh my god i don't have to be a stud you mean that they actually may not care about this there was like relief well i want to comment on that because that's Mm -hmm. just wonderful that you're getting that feedback uh i do too when i I give talks and workshops and uh the thing is that we don't need to have performance anxiety if we redefine sex in a way that doesn't require us to perform good point I mean, duh, in a way, it's a duh, isn't it? But yeah. it, it sometimes doesn't occur to people. Of course, I have to perform. Why? What, how about taking the focus off of whatever it is that you're worried about working right and instead put the focus on what? To, how do I communicate what I need to feel pleasure and how do I give pleasure? If we have anxiety... Mm -hmm. That's only going to make things worse. Mm -hmm. You know, Joan, I hope that just by pointing out the fact that on both sides, we have these worries, this anxiety, that that makes it easier to talk about is really important because like you said, unless we talk about it, we're not going to, not, not going to get anywhere. And the other point, uh, toys and getting more toys. I mean, you know, I can talk about that so easily now. You know, there's people listening to, uh, I'm sure that does cringy. Oh God, how am I going to do that? I can't, you know, that, no, I can't, I can't. I know you get that all the time. Is there a way to overcome that a little easier? Well, yeah. One thing is to learn more about them, mm-hmm. that these are just pleasure tools. That's all. Their one aim is to help you reach orgasm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Why do you, would you need to feel shame about that? If your body is saying, I need more sensation, mm-hmm. I need much more intensity, then mm-hmm. why not? Mm-hmm. I mean, these are just pleasure tools. Yeah. And I would suggest to people who are nervous about that or say, well, I wouldn't even know what to get. I've been reviewing sex toys from a senior perspective for about 15 years Mm -hmm. on my blog at joanprice.com slash blog. And if you start reading about some of these, go, oh, okay, that sounds interesting, but maybe that's a little bit too much for me. Let me read about this one. I wouldn't be afraid of something that looks like a rose, whereas I would be afraid <laughs> of something that looks like this enormous wand with a so that you could bash someone's head in with. So <laughs> you know, it depends on your comfort level and what you mm-hmm. need, what your body needs. Yeah. So I want to say two things. One, you have, obviously you have your blog. People can reach you there. We'll have that in the show notes. And underneath in your title, I have your, your website. Excellent. And you love getting comments on your website, correct? I so do. We can, well, we the can... blog is the only place for comments on my website. Okay. Um, so my blog welcomes your comments. And I want to direct our viewers there because you <laughs> there you are a source to find, to ask questions. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. do it here too. And I, I get back to as much as I can, but you're the expert. So I want to make sure our viewers know that, that you do welcome, welcome those questions there. Absolutely. And then with the toys, how, what kind? Yeah. Well, again, you, you've done this now professionally for 15 years. I've, I've been doing uh, this senior sex education for 20 years and uh, about, about 15, I've been reviewing the sex toys personally. At first I thought, well, I recommend sex toys. And if I'm doing an in-person uh, presentation, I will hold up the oscillator and the mm-hmm. magic wand and tell you why I love those. Mm-hmm. But do I really want to talk about how arousing I personally find a sex toy? I mean, that just seemed like maybe that boundary was too much. And then I said to myself, self, if you don't do it, who will? <laughs> you know, nobody talks out loud about this from a right. senior perspective. Mm-hmm. 
talking right. about, for example, if you've got an arthritic wrist, then mm -hmm. this one transmits the vibrations too much into the wrist. It might not be the best for you. And who talks about that? Right. So I just said, self, get over yourself and <laughs> do it. And I'm so happy that I do now. I love I it. I actually have it. entire companies that depend on my reviews for knowing seniors who want. And I love that. The thing is, too, I'd like to maybe address while we're here, is our men, here's a perception. This goes to changing, you know, your mindset, uh, relearning perhaps what, mm -hmm. you know, or unlearning, I should say, your, your upbringing, is that men are intimidated by sex toys, that some women will, one, hide it, would never admit to it, and certainly wouldn't suggest using them, you know, in the bedroom together that that just that the man would think well if she needs that you know that somehow he's not good enough yeah um i wouldn't say men generally but i would say there are some men who are freaked out by a woman partner wanting to use a sex toy think, well i'm not enough for you it doesn't have to do with you at all mm -hmm. it's what my body needs yes. now mm -hmm. you can go along with that and enjoy it with me mm -hmm. let me show you yeah. this vibrate my favorite vibrator and let's use it during our own mm -hmm. sex play so that I can show you what it how it works for me and it doesn't mm -hmm. mean you just have to sit back and watch and go oh okay that's interesting now what what about me <laughs> you can participate in it with me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I recommend that People think of it as it's just a way to get extra stimulation. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to go dancing, but your knee hurt, would you use a knee brace? Mm -hmm. Well, why not? No, no, I should be enough for you with my, my great leading. <laughs> the way I lead you on the dance floor should be enough mm -hmm. for you. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to say that. We use these tools all the time in different ways. We use jar openers. <laughs> if you think of it, we could make a list of, and maybe in the comments, some people will uh -huh. do that. My favorite yeah. tool that has nothing to do with sex, but I never thought before that it's just a tool. That's and so it's funny. a vibrator. That's funny. And uh, yeah, it, it, please, whatever comes up for you, ask these questions. But you know, on YouTube, you're all anonymous. <laughs> Very few people have their real well, name. Kind of. I mean, yeah, you can ask questions. You can ask yeah. questions and don't worry about ridicule or who's going to find out. And this this is the place to do that. And certainly yeah. on uh, Joan's blog as well. Uh, the other part, and I want to make sure we, God, don't skip over that. Talking with you, I just lose all, all sense of time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the importance of proper lubrication and yes. what is good lubrication and and and, and what is and, and again there there's stuff associated with that that we learned in our like I I, I was one of them not anymore but I, I was I was one that I would hide lubricant oh no because it I, I don't want him to think there's something wrong I did that in my marriage that there's something oh. wrong and you know you oh. just end up having painful sex oh oh <laughs> and, no, no, and no, I'm not no, the no. only one Joan and I'm sure you know that I'm, know. I'm sure this isn't I the know. first time you heard this and no. there's lots of women out there and and there's men that think if a woman uses even at our age because it's been in our comments she doesn't need a lubricant if she's with me. And I just, I mean, I, I busted out laughing. I said, oh boy, he's, yeah, he's good. <laughs> well, all that he's demonstrating is his lack of knowledge. Right. Yeah. So why don't we lubricate anymore? Well, mm -hmm. because of the hormonal changes. Right. With menopause, starting at perimenopause and with mm -hmm. menopause and then getting a little more. And it, it isn't just once you've gone through menopause, that's it. You'll be at this point for the rest of your life. We continue to age. Mm -hmm. We continue to produce less lubrication. Mm -hmm. that's, not a, that's not a defect. Right. That's just how our bodies work because lubrication is not based on how awesome you are, partner. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. is based on what is happening physiologically in my body. So just as you may not be able to count on your erection all the time, I am not going to even try to count on natural lubrication because why? And yeah. even for women who do lubricate naturally, a good lubricant just is, adds more cushion and more joy of friction. Right. 
Right. I think these are the two biggest things that we have to unlearn is that yeah. one, that a, a hard penis means that the man is aroused and that you need that for real sex and that women, if they're, if they don't lubricate, that they're not aroused. And that's, we take that with us into later life sex. And those are horrible, horrible uh, things that we learned. And we need to stop thinking mm -hmm. that way because it doesn't serve us. It's not true. It's not factual. And it only means we'll have bad sex or no sex. or We won't want to have sex because who wants to have bad sex? Right, exactly. Well, well, we're on the subject of lubrication mm -hmm. then. That's another thing that I, I've learned not to know. Well, when I started the show, <laughs> but there's bad lube and there's good lube. And it's so important to know the difference. Like lotion, you, can, you, know, you don't get yeah. your lotion and lubricate. Talk, talk to us about lubrication that we understand that. I'm going to make it really simple. There are some lubes that are really good. There are mm -hmm. some lubes that are really bad. How would you know how to choose? One mm -hmm. of two ways. You can mm -hmm. learn all about the ingredients and which ones are good for us and which ones aren't. Who's going to do mm -hmm. that? No one. Or <laughs> we can take the endorsement of people who already have done that work. Wicked Sensual Care is a company that has been making lubes for years, lubricants mm -hmm. for years. This new line was created specifically for people going through menopause and after menopause. Okay. The ingredients are not only totally trustworthy, mm -hmm. but they are so good that these lubricants can be used as vaginal moisturizers, not just as sexual lubricants. I was just going to ask you, there's a difference between moisturizer and lubricant, and this does both. Interesting. Yes, this does mm -hmm. both. A vaginal mm -hmm. moisturizer is mm -hmm. absorbed by the skin and helps make the skin, the vaginal skin healthier. Mm -hmm. the, va the, the lubricant is specifically for sex, to make mm -hmm. sex more pleasurable, pleasurable. slicker. Mm -hmm. it's, it's enhancing the lubricant we either already have or replacing it if we do not. And if you subscribe to my newsletter, and there's a link on my website for that, mm -hmm. then you'll see in my newsletter much more about this because I mm -hmm. explain it a little more and give uh, actually a link for a discount. No, I oh, that's great. No, we'll definitely. Uh, well, the, the link is absolutely in the show notes. And obviously, I will link to all that. What's interesting and that's why I ask questions that almost sounds stupid, but I know if I had those questions that there are, you know, lots of other people who have right. the same, have the same questions. And I get asked questions, which um, people say, oh, should we use your lube? Okay. What household item can I use? Mm, no, yes, no, please. No. Yeah. Can we use olive oil? Can we use, I don't know. Would you put WD-40 in your vagina? No, <laughs> you, do not. <laughs> do, no. Get a lubricant that's made especially for sex that has ingredients mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. trustworthy. Do not use food. <laughs> do not <laughs> use whatever you have around the house. Uh, Joan, I do want to ask one, one question uh, before we close here. When we talk about reviving desire, I mean, that, that's also that's an eight-hour discussion or more. But in the context of what we've discussed today, what is something that our viewers can like take home, take away from the segment about reviving desire, you know, is that possible? Oh, sure. And as you say, we could do a whole segment on that. Mm -hmm. But let me just give you something very practical that we yes. can do. And I don't want people to go, no, no, no. All right, just <laughs> open your mind to what I'm going to say here. Schedule sex dates mm. with yourself or a partner. Okay. Make that a regular part of your sexual practice to mm -hmm. schedule sex dates. When you, sec when you schedule a sex date mm -hmm. and you start planning for it and you say, oh, okay, then I want to have, I want to have my new um, Pulse Queen charge. Let me put this in the charger before I shower. Let me use this basket. I'm going to have a little wipe up towel. And, oh, I know my partner likes this. I'll put that in the basket. As I am preparing, preparing. see, you're getting excited thinking about it, aren't you? <laughs> so do we. When we plan it, 
we we have sort of an anticipatory foreplay <laughs> we we have mental foreplay we get in the mood mm -hmm. well, because that's, we're, especially yeah. for women we need that yeah we need that and mm -hmm. we think about what's going to happen and how do i make sure that's happened let me make sure oh, oh why don't i put a blindfold on the pillow <laughs> Oh, I know. I'll put a blindfold on the pillow. And when he comes in the room, I'll say, put that on and mm -hmm. lie down and receive. And then he won't even know what so sex toy I'm using on him. Oh, will this be fun? And at a certain point, I'll say, okay, you can take off the blindfold now. I mean, this is the way we can warm up our brains and our bodies. And by the time our sex store date rolls around. Well, we're ready. <laughs> I love that. I cannot wait to hear what, what especially men have to say about this. I can see where some are like, oh my God, that, ew. and others are like, there's no way of putting on a blindfold and seeing what toy she's going to use on me. <laughs> well, uh, there's some pleasure that you're not going to get. Then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So funny. Joan, I, I just, I love, I love talking with you. You're absolutely right. Nobody talks like this. Where do you get this kind of information? And, you know, I hope to have you back a lot more times that we you can switch, you know, put me in between all of your other media stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to leave our viewers with today that maybe I didn't ask, or you want to say? Be open-minded. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to the viewers who is saying, no, I'd never do whatever it is mm -hmm. you're saying, oh, I'd never. Just be open-minded. Mm -hmm. Try something twice. Try a new thing twice. I say twice because the first time you may be a little nervous. You may not know exactly what you're doing. And, oh, I don't know. Is this okay to do? All right. Get the first time out of the way <laughs> and then try it again. But mm -hmm. try new things, because mm -hmm. if you're just doing the same kind of thing over and over again, mm -hmm. and it wasn't really satisfying the last 65 times, yeah. it's not going to be satisfying the next time. Yeah, exactly. Joan, as always, I will link to all of your information, the link in the show notes for your website, as well as on screen here, your books. Oh my goodness. I love that. The, <laughs> these are books you need to pick up and, yeah. and read there, you know, especially if you want to live or revive a, a later in life sex life. So Joan, thank you again. And I can't wait for our next conversation on Second Act TV. Thank you. Thank you.